Hi, my name is Natalie Lenise. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, formerly of Toledo, Ohio. And I'm gonna teach you today how to make a collage postcard with a painted pattern. The first thing I've done is gather a variety of supplies that I'm gonna use for this project. First, you can choose whether you wanna do this project on like a brand new piece of paper, which I've cut down. You can see I've started a painting here. This is five by seven inches. Or if you want included in your box are some um, vintage postcards, you may choose to do this project on an existing postcard. I've also gathered some pages from old magazines. These, this is kind of my favorite um, source. So I've also gathered a few pieces that I've already cut out uh, in more detail. One piece of advice is just to gather more collage material than you think you'll need, because when we get to that stage, of the project, um, it's really fun to experiment with different combinations of images and patterns and colors. And that's really the playful part of this project. In addition to your collage materials, you'll need scissors uh, or an X-Acto blade or the slice tool that you have in your box, um, whichever you prefer to use for cutting. I just keep a pencil and a ruler on hand if I need it. When we get to gluing down your collages, um, I like to use this. This is like a little vinyl squeegee that kind of smooths vinyl lettering out. We're also going to be painting. So for the painting portion, um, I have a palette set up here. You may have a plastic palette or a paper palette, a selection of brushes, which I believe you have in your box. Your brushes, of course, as I mentioned, everything is water soluble, so you can rinse your brushes in between um, colors thoroughly in a jar of, or a cup of water. And then you can use a little paper towel or a rag just to dry them off. And then when it comes time for cleaning up, you can just rinse that paint off in this water. At the sink, just get a little bit of hand soap or dish soap in your palm, and you can swirl your brushes around gently and then rinse those thoroughly. Um, and finally, you wanna let your brushes dry on the edge of your table like this. Um, if you store them upright, any water that's in, um, in the bristles could drain into this area of the brush, which is where the glue is that uh, holds the brush together. This part of the brush will come loose and it'll kind of fall apart. So um, take good care of your brushes because if you do, you can, you can really use them for a very long time. You have in your box um, paint. I use this acrylic based gouache, but um, I think you have acrylic paint or you're welcome to use whatever paint you may have on hand at home. A little rag or a paper towel and some water. We'll use those items for the painting portion. And then finally, um, you have a glue stick in your kit, but um, I'll also show you how to use matte um, or gel medium to glue your collage items down. This is a slightly more permanent and archival way to glue your materials so that they don't fall off and so that the fragile papers are protected. So the first part of this project will entail painting. So the way I, I make my collages is I'll paint the entire surface or the part of the surface that I'm planning on covering in pattern. And then once that's complete and dry, then I adhere the collage on top of it. So with the projects in this uh, edition of the art box, you're working with pattern quite a bit. These paintings that I'm working on are showing an example of a pattern that I commonly use in my work. Um, it's kind of a variation on a zigzag pattern that utilizes some um, dimension to make something that, in my eyes, ends up looking a little bit more like um, housetops or a mountain range or something like that. If creating patterns is new to you, you can most certainly use a pencil to sketch it out on your paper. I would recommend doing that very lightly though so the graphite from the pencil doesn't uh, blend into your paint too much as you work. Some examples of patterns that you may want to use could um, be as simple as a stripe pattern, a wave pattern, squiggles, zigzags, scallops of some kind, if you think of like a fish scale kind of pattern. Essentially any shape or line that you're repeating is a pattern, so um, you can really be as inventive as you want with it. I squeezed out a little paint on my palette and I'm gathering it up on my brush. You can kind of get a feel for how it, um, you know, how easily it drags. Sometimes I just take one little dab of water 
and mix it in if I, if I just want to thin it a tiny bit. And then if you're working um, on a hard edge pattern, in other words, you're, you know, you're creating a really crisp line of some kind, you can use a flat brush and drag it sideways to create that nice, even edge. And at this point, you know, the tooth of the paper may cause the paint to absorb really quickly. You may want to adjust the viscosity or how, you know, how thin the paint is so that you can um, move it in a way that's easy or comfortable for you. And I typically kind of go along the edges of these shapes and then kind of fill in the paint inside. And each, since it repeats, each stripe kind of corrects the one before it. So if there's any part of that line that kind of got off kilter or isn't feeling quite right, I can fix it with the next color. Okay, once you have um, finished painting, then we can start experimenting with collage. You might want to look for source imagery that includes um, topics that you're really interested in, like there's a lot of ads for food, which tends to show up quite a bit in my collages. I'm usually searching for like full body images of people because I also really like to like just get some legs <laughs> or get like an entire hand. I think you'll find if you like sit down with a book or sit down with a magazine and just page through it, like you'll just find some inspiration come at you from the images you're seeing. So what I have are some images that I've already cut out as well as um, I just grabbed another page out of a magazine to kind of show you what I would have seen paging through, which is this lovely cornflakes ad. And then um, maybe the part of it that I'm really interested in collaging would be this bowl of cereal right in the middle. Usually I just first quickly cut it out like around the shape. And then once I've cut it, you know, kind of quickly, then I can go back in and cut it more perfectly. So if you have a shape that has like a hole in the middle of it, like if a person is standing like this and you have this area of the um, image to cut out, that's a great opportunity to use your X-Acto knife. It could be tricky to get into those uh, tight areas with your scissors. So that's why I keep both on hand. And as I said earlier, it's always a good idea to surround yourself with more collage pieces than you think you'll need because this part is really fun. You get to kind of pick up different images and play with how they may go together. Like maybe there's people dancing in a salad bowl that kind of changes the way you think about scale. This is super fun. If you're just working with paint and experimenting right on your canvas or your paper, then you risk having you know changed it and making it really hard to change back. With collage, you kind of get to like, you know, hold these pieces in your hands, make some decisions before anything is permanent. And that's, I think that's what's really fun. But I think I'm gonna go ahead with this design. So once I've decided where I want um, my collage image to go, apply the glue thoroughly to the back of your image. And once you've done that, again, you'll just really carefully, um, you know, starting with one end of the shape, stick it down where you want it, and then you can smooth it out. And this is the point in the process where I, I don't know if you'll need it with a glue stick, but if you have that um, little squeegee or cardboard straight edge, you can very gently just pull from the center out. Another uh, material you can use um, to glue is a um, gel medium. So you can buy this at the art store. It's also um, like an acrylic product that's um, going to preserve your piece and uh, kind of hold it together a little more permanently. You kind of use it just like paint. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use a brush here. Again, I'm going to 
think about where I want to place this image. And this time I'm just, I'm gonna mark a few things out just so I have, um, just so I have a sense of where the collage will cover the painting. This is like very much the consistency of paint, so you can even spread it out on your palette if you want. And what I'm gonna do is cover the back of this with the medium. So I'm also just painting some of the medium onto the painted surface. And I'm following along where I drew my marks. It's okay if the, if the medium just starts to dry a tiny bit in this process. That's why we've painted it on both surfaces. And I'm gonna just carefully place it according to my marks here. And then I'm gonna gently just smooth it from the center with my fingers. And then once again, I'm gonna use this tool. I'm applying like a very minimal amount of pressure. And then as a final step, if anything is off the edge, you can just use an X-Acto blade and trim it. One other thing I wanted to note about this project, once the collage and the paint is finished, I've chosen to varnish that surface because I have actually addressed and stamped these and mailed them to friends. So um, in order for it to be a little bit more durable to go through the mail and to be handled at various um, postal service facilities, um, adding an extra layer of protection has been really helpful. So um, if you choose to do that, I like to use a spray adhesive, which I brought. You definitely only want to spray this um, in a highly ventilated area. You'll just shake it up really well. And then at like a good like 10 inch dis distance from the surface, you want to apply a nice even coat. And this comes in a matte um, gloss or satin finish. So I have a nice matte finish on this postcard and it's ready to mail. Thanks for tuning in to my project. Um, you Really, the sky's the limit with, um, with collage. You can take it in any direction you'd like, and especially if you put it on a postcard, you can, um, you can use it to totally make someone's day.